Hi, it's Sylvia. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be discussing how much house can I afford. So why is this important? A lot of people ask me, you know, how much house can I afford? And it's really important to be able to differentiate between how much money the bank is going to give you and how much money you can actually afford. So a lot of people end up being house poor because lenders are probably going to give you much more money than you're actually comfortable with. So it's really important that you run your own numbers and be able to differentiate to make sure that you don't end up being house poor. So let's talk about first how banks analyze how much they actually are able to give you. So banks usually look at three main things. They look at this thing called the debt to income ratio. And really all it, all it is is your monthly minimum payments for debt divided by your gross monthly income. And they tend to want to see a ratio between 35 to 45%. Anything higher than that is less, it's possible, but very less likely. And then the second thing is they look at your salary. So they take a look, hey, are you a small business owner like myself with much more irregular income? Or are you a physician at a very stable hospital with very stable income. That actually has to do. And number three, they also take a look at your credit score. Obviously, the higher the credit score, the lower your interest rate. Now, the fastest way to just figure this stuff out is to just use an online calculator like bankrate.com or smartasset.com, and there you can just analyze how much money the bank will give you for different down payments. Now there's also three main rules of thumbs that go around the financial uh, internet, would you say? The first one is the very popular one called the 28 to 36 percent rule of thumb. And basically what it says is that your gross monthly income, you should not spend more than 28 percent of your gross monthly income on, on any home related costs. And you really should not be spending more than 36%, including your debt and mortgage and all the other, other credit cards. Now, the second one is the Dave Ramsey rule of thumb. And he's a very conservative individual, which can work very well for conservative people. Basically, what he states is that you shouldn't be spending more than 25% of your take-home pay in a 15-year mortgage. Um, so that includes, you know, property taxes, mortgage, et cetera, and insurance. And then the last, and that's the most simple rule of thumb is that you just shouldn't spend more than one third of your payment to a, a mortgage and property taxes. Now that's all very nice, but these are just rules of thumb. So I think it's important to get down and really look at your own numbers to just make sure you're able to analyze how much house you can actually afford. So step number one is to figure out what your net income is. And most people that you ask, they have no idea how much they've spent in taxes. And your net income is just simply your gross income minus your taxes. If I were to ask you how much you paid in taxes last year, many of you would not be able to tell me. So it's really important to know this number, look at your pay stubs, analyze how much you actually paid, and then be able to calculate your net income that way. Now, if you don't have access to your pay stubs for whatever reason, then you can use an online calculator as well, like Smart Assets or Bankrate. They have great calculators that I really enjoy playing around with. And you just basically put in, hey, are you single? Are you married? Do you, where do you live? And it will just basically give you what your net income is or your take home pay and how much your approximate taxes are. Obviously, it's not perfect, but it's just a really good approximation. The second step that you should do is to make sure that you're still saving for your goals and your retirement and any other goals that you have. One thing that I say and I recommend is that you can't take a loan for retirement. So before you buy a house, you really should be prioritizing that and making sure that even if you were to buy a home, you would still be able to save and invest for whatever goals that you have. You know, make sure you're still contributing to your 401k. A lot of people just assume that their house is an investment, which some people do a great job and they actually invest for a home. But most of us, you can't really beat the liquidity of the stock market. So I personally want to make sure that I have a big cushion in the stock market and in cash 
before I, I, I basically buy a home. Don't underestimate the liquidity of the stock market. I know some people think that the stock market is very risky and it's a casino. And I understand it's very high risk, but real estate is also very high risk. So don't think that just because it's real estate that is less risky than the stock market. Number three is to analyze your expenses. And a lot of people recommend that you just look at your expenses from the last month or the last three months, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think it's a better idea to take a look at all of your expenses that you spent last year to be able to analyze your expenses on a yearly basis rather than on a monthly basis. Sometimes there's gonna be health expenses that you may have paid in June or July, and it makes much, much more sense to analyze your budget on a yearly basis rather than on a monthly basis. So get very, very clear on this. Another thing that I recommend is that you don't get stingy. Um, you know, how much, you spend, how much did you spend on healthcare? How much did you spend on travel? How much did you spend on hotels? How much did you spend on dining out? Analyze it. Don't judge yourself. Just make sure you understand your numbers. Sometimes you'll be surprised how much you spend on Ubers and how much you spend on, you know, coffee. Also, don't remember to be aggressively paying off any high interest debt before you buy a house. That's what I would recommend. Now what you want to do is you take your net income minus the savings that you need for any goals that you have, minus any expenses that you have, and that's going to give you really how much money you can spend on your mortgage, plus your property taxes, plus home insurance, plus utilities, and plus maintenance. So don't forget all the hidden costs of being a homeowner, like maintenance and utilities. Make sure that you incorporate that into the mortgage, into the monthly payment. Overall, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please be on the conservative end. Being house poor is not fun. You're, if you're young and you think that you can spend a lot of money on your mortgage and you're never gonna get that youth back. So make sure that you prioritize, you know, saving in for retirement and having fun and enjoying your youth and enjoying your life rather than just living to pay for this house and being stuck in this house that you may not be able to ever get out of. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more and I hope to see you soon. Bye.